Hey Rubies, welcome to my channel. It's me, Dominique LaRue. If you are new here, I am a makeup artist, I am a singer, I am a blogger, I am a foodie, I am all of the above. And first things first, I just want to tell y'all Happy New Year. I know it's been a minute since I've been here, but we are here and we made it to 2022, girl. So I'm ready for everything that this year has in store. If you are not already, please make sure that you subscribe to my channel and make sure you click the little bell so that you do not miss an upload. Make sure you got the notifications turned on, girl, because I'm going to be coming with the content this year and you don't want to miss it. I asked my followers what kind of content they would like to see from me. And uh, mostly everybody answered option E, which is a little bit of everything. But a lot of you also said that you would like to see more BDSM videos and more about how I got into the lifestyle, updates, and just, you know, teaching you more and more things about that, which I absolutely would love to do. So today we're going to be covering what is BDSM. We're going to get into the meat and potatoes of what it's all about, um, how to get involved. So if that sounds like something that's interesting to you, keep on watching. So what does BDSM stand for? The B stands for bondage and discipline. That's where you'll see a lot of punishment, a lot of spanking, a lot of restraints. The D stands for domination and submission. That's your power exchange relationships. The S stands for sadism. Sadism is where the dominant party enjoys inflicting pain or being the one in control of the other person. The M stands for masochism, which is the opposite of sadism. They like to be on the other end of the pain, meaning they like to receive the pain and they like to give over the control. As far as my personal definition of BDSM, it's not too far off from what we've already discussed. Uh, only thing that I would say is different, seeing as though I'm in a more professional realm of BDSM and according to Webster, it is a sexual activity. I don't feel like BDSM always has to include sex or sexual activities, um, but it is a more erotic, it's a very erotically charged interest or kink or fetish or shall I say, but it does not always have to include sex. When I'm with a client, it does not include sex. The two most important things about BDSM are safety and consent. When it comes to consent, all parties involved need to be consenting adults in order for this to be an ethical BDSM experience. As you all know, no means no, and everyone reserves the right to refuse or stop a scene or session at any given time, at any given moment. Consent is always the major, 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 major thing here. As you know, um, we use a lot of things. You know, I can't just go around hitting people. You know, this hurts. I can't just go around hitting people with things and locking people up and, and tying people up and stuff like that without their consent, honey. That's assault. They will take me to jail, child. We can't, we can't be living like that. We can't live our lives like that. Safety first, always. All parties involved need to be in a safe and sound mind when engaging in play. Make sure that if you are partaking in any type of mind altering substances that you and your partner understand the risks. I personally do not suggest it. Um, a little 420, I don't feel like it's a problem, but I personally do not allow my clients to come see me drunk or on any other type of drugs because your reaction and the way things feel is different when you're under the influence. So we just want to make sure that we have a safe environment for the both of us. So I do not allow any hard drugs or alcohol during my sessions with my slaves because safety first. Also, you want to make sure that all your gadgets and all your toys is clean. Make sure you sanitize everything. I keep picking this up because it's sitting right here by me. want to make sure everything is clean. Y'all know we're here in this coronavirus and things like that. So yeah, make sure your shit is sanitized and clean because you don't want to get nobody sick. You don't want to you don't want to be no nasty. You want to be no nasty dom. You don't want to be no nasty sub. You want to be no nasty kinksters. Make sure that everybody, everything is clean and everything is sanitized. So make sure you got your protection if y'all going to be engaging in a little sex. You know what I'm saying? Then make sure that y'all got your protection on deck. Make sure that we having some safe and sound fun. 
Honey, make sure you got your condoms. Make sure you got your dental dams, whatever you might need to make sure that y'all have a good time. But safety and consent first. They go hand in hand. Safety first, consent first. Consent first, safety first. All of it go hand in hand. Period. Now we can get into different roles and common kinks within the community the first one that we're going to talk about obviously is the dominant role that is the dominant role that i choose to take on in my professional life a lot of dominant roles uh it's more so like a dom which is d-o-m that's the masculine form and then there's d-o-m-m-e which is the feminine form uh for a dom a dominant party in the power exchange relationship some people go by mistress master um, sir, mommy, daddy, you know, when you get into some age play, you might be getting into, you know, a little bit of that. But it's, it's, a, it's a variety of different, like, names um, and titles. Most of them are considered, you know, the dominant party in the situation. And so that person is the one that is inflicting the pain, the punishment, or even the reward or the one being served. It doesn't always have to be a painful situation. You don't have to always have, you know, be striking them with a whip and, you know, chains. It's not always like that. Those are common names and roles for those of us in the dominant side of BDSM. Moving on to our submissives, the good boys and girls of the world in my Maj voice. Make sure y'all check out her podcast, The Fun Sexual is the Best. For the good boys and girls in the world, um, they will be considered the subs, the submissives, the littles, the betas, the pets, the slaves, all of the above. Those are my lovelies who trust us enough, the dominant parties, to relinquish control and to serve us and to just make sure that we're worshipped in every way. I love it. They definitely play. I feel like the role of a submissive is way more important than that of a dom because they trust us to not ESPN. You could have waited. They trust us to take control of them and dominate them in, in whatever way that they consent to. See how we got back to that word? Also, a very, very common role in this community would be a switch, in of which I consider myself to be a switch as far as the lifestyle. Because when I'm, you know, with my men or if I'm, you know, with my partner or whatever, I like to take on a submissive role sometimes, a lot of the times, because I'm so dominant in every other aspect of my life and also in my professional BDSM life. And even, you know, sometimes I might... You know, I might do a little dominating in my personal life every now and again. So, I consider myself a switch because I like to play both sides of the fence. I, I don't like to just be one way. You know, I like to switch and go back and forth. You know, sometimes I want to be baby girl. Sometimes I want to be the goddess. So, you know, girl, you just be a little bit of this, a little bit of that. So, now that you understand the basics, I'm pretty sure you're trying to figure out how the hell do I find other people? Like, everybody be asking me. Where do you find these people? So there's a lot of kink platforms and websites out there. Some have been more successful than others for me. The main one that I would recommend right off the flap if you're trying to get in this thing, you're trying to meet other kinky people, is Fet Life. It's going to be F-E-T-L-I-F-E. And when you log into it, you know, you create your account. Basically, it's like a red and black Facebook. It's set up just like Facebook, especially how Facebook, old Facebook used to be. Um, it's a social media site for kinksters. Um, they always have a lot of groups, a lot of events being posted, um, a lot of group chats that you can join. Um, the, the, the possibilities are endless. Fed Life is a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful starting point if you want to meet other like-minded kinky people in your community because, I mean, they are around. So Fed Life, I'm telling y'all, Fed Life, if you want to find other kinksters and not feel weirded out about it or feeling like you're not in the right spot, I'm telling you, Fet Life is the place for you to be. And as weird as it may sound, porn sites have a very large kink community. I don't know how comfortable y'all may be with creating an account on a porn site, but you probably already got you an account on a porn site because you on this video, you nasty. I know you is. But anyway, porn sites definitely have a good following. I 
you can search a lot of things on porn sites based off the niche which is why i would suggest that especially if you plan on posting content i would say porn sites are definitely a good way to find other kinky people and like-minded people because you know birds of a feather they fly con i promise you they're on the porn sites like Pornhub, I would say like Pornhub because that's more so set up like a social media site as well as opposed to like your ex videos and stuff like that. Like Pornhub is really interactive, so it's a lot of kinksters on Pornhub, myself included. Group Me is a really good platform for the group chats. I found a lot of the group chats that I've been in, majority of the group chats that I've been in are run on Group Me. So make sure that you download that app if there's something that you're interested in being in a group chat with different kinky people. There's a lot of kinky groups. I specifically go for African American and BIPOC kinky groups because, you know, I like brown bodies. So I like to play with brown bodies, okay, period. Clubhouse, I didn't even put that on my notes, but Clubhouse, which is gonna send me into a good old segue to the next section as far as like the social media platforms. Clubhouse is a good way to meet people in the BDSM community. They are constantly having rooms. They are constantly on Clubhouse having conversations. So make sure that you tap into Clubhouse. Do not just write Clubhouse off just yet, girl. I know she kind of looked like she came and went, but Clubhouse is a really good tool for meeting people, especially when it comes down to like hobbies and niches and stuff like that. So I definitely would suggest Clubhouse. Also, OkCupid okay is an interesting app to be on if you are looking to find other kinky people because it just, it's so detailed the way you make the profile to where you would know that right offhand. You know, you can disclose those type of things in your profile. So I would suggest OkCupid, okay Tinder, y'all know how Tinder is. Tinder is... Very, very hit and miss. Um, I found a couple clients on Tinder. I've also met other doms on Tinder. So I guess it just depends on how you use it. But Tinder is hit and miss. But it, I mean, hey, it's worth a shot. Instagram. Using your hashtags. Censorship has really been a bitch like to us, to sex workers and things like that. So it's a little hard for us to stay visible on a platform like Instagram, but I have gotten a lot of inquiries on Instagram. I have made a lot of money on Instagram. Um, so yeah, that's definitely a good starting point as well. Just be careful how you market yourself on Instagram because like I said, censorship, they don't be fucking with the sex workers. Like they will take your page in a heartbeat, but Instagram is not a bad place as well. Like I said, I made a lot of money on Instagram. The last thing I really wanted to touch on was safety precautions when meeting up. If this is something that you are interested in doing, whether it's like a personal thing or a professional thing, just make sure that when you are meeting new people, you are taking the correct precautions as far as safety. And I, I don't want to scare anybody or anything like that, but I mean, you know, the type of world we live in, we got to make sure that we stay safe from coronavirus, from these creepy men, like we got to make sure we stay safe. So... What I do, always video verifications. I make sure that people are who they say that they are. Uh, also, we must meet in public first before I take on a client. We do a video verification and I have them take me out to lunch or coffee, something very light um, and casual just so that we can meet and see how we vibe in person so that I can use my discernment um, as far as their spirit, make sure I don't feel weirded out about anything. Make sure that they don't have a problem giving me all the documents that I require for meeting up to do the session. I require identification and all that. Now, if you are just like meeting up on a fun time, like I said, use your better judgment. Please do not meet anybody that you like, that you haven't met in public first. If there's someone that you want to play with, just do what you need to do to make sure that you are being safe. If y'all plan on doing a list six child, then you know, make sure that y'all use the uh, protection you don't want. Nothing that nobody got out here. It's a lot of shit that can be avoided. So make sure that you are protecting yourself in all ways. I cannot stress that enough. When you is meeting up with these people, honey, because like I said, I don't want to scare nobody, but people aren't always that nice to sex workers. People aren't always that nice to sexual deviants. And it's sad to say people will book you to people will book something like this to kill a bitch. It's fucked up, but that's that's real life. So we got to make sure that you're on top of your safety before anything in this game. And I'm not trying to scare y'all, make y'all think that like kinksters and, and people involved in BDSM are just creepy, but 
it's still sex work. It's still a very erotic and sexually charged hobby, niche, however you want to go about it. So all I'm saying is make sure, like, weird, weed out the weirdos. We're going to call it W-O-W. Weed out the weirdos, period, for your safety. Safety and cons safety and consent is always number one. Thank you so much for tuning into this video. I really hope you all enjoyed it. I really hope that I was able to teach you all some things about BDSM. That's just the basics. Um, I, will, I said meat and potatoes, but like, it's just the meat. I guess we could get into the potatoes on a later date. Please comment any questions that you might have, any suggestions, anything that you'd like for me to cover, any story times. Um, I'm, I think I'm going to do a story time like about my first client ever. So I have that coming soon for y'all. I can also give y'all like a, you know, more to show y'all all the stuff that's in my kit. So I'm excited. If BDSM is something that you are interested in, please make sure that you follow all of my goddess accounts as well. It's going to be goddess X Cleo across all platforms. G O D D E S S X C L E O. On Instagram, it is the same. It just has an underscore after it because they deleted my first page. I am Goddess Cleo, Goddess Cleopatra across all platforms. Dominique LaRue across all vanilla platforms. So make sure that you follow me. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to turn on the notifications. And I will see y'all next time.